Hello everyone. I am going to give a quick demo about containers and their management using Kubernetes. Linux containers is an operating system level abstraction method for running multiple isolated Linux systems on a control host using a single shared Linux kernel. And Docker and Rocket are open source programs that enable a Linux application and its dependencies to be packaged as a container. Applications built in the form of container images can be pushed in the registry and be reused to deploy on any platform. Due to the immutable nature of container images, every commit to the application builds a new container image, thus enabling rolling back and forth between the versions real simple. Using Kubernetes, I'm going to show how quickly and efficiently these applications can be spun up and managed as containers. What you see on the right is the tectonic or the Kubernetes dashboard and it lists a bunch of pods. So pods are nothing but logical grouping of containers and uh, it's a feature of Kubernetes wherein it uh, spins up containers in the form of pods. A pod can, a single pod can either have one container or it can host multiple containers and one pod will have one IP address of its own. I'm going to show you how to quickly spin up a WordPress application, which is a blog hosting application using Kubernetes. I run this command, kubectl run WordPress and specify the image, which is uh, WordPress and it is being pulled from the query registry. And then I expose the port 80 for that uh, container. As we see, it says deployment WordPress created. So it should create pod associated with that deployment. So if you search under pods for WordPress, there you go. There is a WordPress pod which is created. And under that pod, there is a container WordPress. Now we need to expose this particular application because uh, we want to access it on a public network. So when we do and exposed to the deployment, it creates a service around that application. And uh, the service does nothing but uh, it locks down that application uh, to a port on the physical node on which it is hosted. So let's see, a service by the name WordPress should be created. There you go. And it should have a port mapping to the physical node. So if we enter this port 32312, should see the WordPress application running. There you go. So we have a WordPress application up and running in a matter of seconds. Kubernetes also has a bunch of interesting features and uh, components. One of them is replication controllers. What replication controller does is hosts a bunch of pods like n number of replicas of a pod and make sure that at any given time that many number of replicas are always present thus achieving high availability and uh, resiliency for that particular application. So let's see, we have a replication controller for MySQL and currently it's hosting a couple of MySQL pods. I'll take one of these pods and I'll kill that pod and I should see that another pod with a different ID or a different pod name is being spun up. So what I'll do is coop kettle delete pod. And if I refresh this page, I see that the pod with that particular name has been deleted, but immediately it spun up a new pod. And that has uh, a running MySQL container. Replication controllers also have this ability to scale up and scale down. So if I want to increase my pod count to from two to four, I can do that or uh, it can also scale down. So let's increase this pod count from two to four.
So as you see on the right, it immediately spun up two more containers or two more pods. And now we have four pods under uh, the replication controller MySQL 5.5. Another interesting capability of Kubernetes is the ability to have rolling updates. What rolling update means is uh, updating a particular application to a newer version or uh, even rolling back that application to the previous version. How we can achieve this is um, when I do a rolling update of say MySQL 5.5 to MySQL 5.7, what Kubernetes is going to do for me is uh, kill all the pods of 5.5 and spin up new pods for 5.7. But it's not going to uh, be abruptly killed. It's going to kill one pod and going to spin up one pod for 5.7. Then it will kill another pod of 5.5 and then it will uh, create another pod for 5.7, so on and so forth until all the pods of 5.5 are killed and that will be a graceful update from MySQL 5.5 to MySQL 5.7. I'm going to run this rolling update command on my left and at the same time watch the pods being killed and created. So currently we see there are four pods of 5.5 five. and when we run this command we should see the changes accordingly. So you see there one container is in the creation for MySQL 5.7 and now it's scaling MySQL 5.5 down to 3. Now it's scaled up 5.7 to 2. Even on the right, you see that MySQL 5.7 replication controller is created. And the pods are being populated under this contr replication controller. And now it has almost killed all the pods from MySQL 5.5 and brought up all four in 5.7. And it says rolling update is complete. There you go. We don't see MySQL 5.5 anymore and MySQL 5.7 is up and running with four pods in it. Just to make sure that we have actually updated MySQL 5.5 to MySQL 5.7, we will log into that container or pod by doing group kettle exec the pod name and log into the shell. There you go, you see the updated version of MySQL 5.7. That was all for uh, containers and Kubernetes. Thank you.